So today we're covering a really, really common downswing mistake that unfortunately never ends well. We can explain why it happens and more importantly, a drill that you can do to fix it. So in this video, I am addressing what is possibly one of the most common downswing mistakes that I see amongst the amateurs. It really affects the delivery of the golf club. It really saps power out the golf swing. It robs you of consistency. And we're gonna explain just why it happens because I'm a real big believer that if the golfer understands why things happen, they're in a much better place to put in the right procedures to fix it. So before we get started, what do you think we're talking about in this video? What do you think is the most common downswing mistake that I would see from the golfers that I coach? Bearing in mind that I coach pretty much recreational golfers, possibly just like yourself. Drop down, let me know if you're interested to get your thoughts. So before we go through exactly what the fault is, we need to understand a little bit about how the golf swing works because like I said a moment ago, if we can understand where these faults kind of start and how they develop, we really start to be able to understand a little bit more in depth about why they happen and what we can do to fix them. So let me take my setup to this ball and I'm just going to stand up dead straight this way. Now, as you can see, I'm just stood perfectly straight up. I'm going to let the club sit out in front of me. And if we use the leading edge as our reference point, you'll notice that it's pretty much straight up and down exactly the same as my body angle. Now, if we were to simulate the golf swing from here, as I start to rotate my body, that leading edge can pretty much stay dead straight up and down. There's been no rotation in that golf club. I continue to turn my body and as I get to around about here, I'm pretty much getting to the point where I'm stuck. I can't really turn my body a huge amount more. For me to get that golf club any further around my body, which I probably would want to do if I'm really looking to put some speed into it, I need to use some hands and arms. So as I use my hands and arms, two things are going to happen. Number one, the golf club is going to move much further around my body. I'm able to put some more length into my swing. But just have a look at that club head now. That leading edge, which at one point was perfectly up and down and perfectly vertical, is now rotated through 90 degrees and it's lay completely in a different position. So if we do that again, you'll see that club will have itself vertically up and down. As we rotate, it stays vertically up and down. Now watch the club head as I rotate my arms, it starts to fold and the club face is now in a very, very different position. That golf club is now effectively 90 degrees open. Now we can't really get away with that because if we didn't have that extra movement, we'd have a very, very short goal swing. And if we set up the ball, that would look like something that was about here. We can't really hit the ball particularly far that way. So we need those arms to do that movement, which means that the golf club is always in the back swing going to be opening by around about 90 degrees. That's fine, but we therefore need to close it by 90 degrees. This is where we start to see the most common fault that I see. This golf club, weighs a little bit, it's got a certain static weight to it, but as we start to swing it around our body and it's got momentum in it, effectively weighs a little bit more. So what do we tend to see? Well, we tend to see a lot of golfers who make this really nice movement here, the arms fold, the club gets into a really nice spot and that club face gets into where it needs to be. But on the way down, they're really keen to close that club face, that would make sense, we need to do that. But they will use their trail shoulder. They will start to make a movement which looks a little bit more like this, and watch what happens to that club face as I do this. It starts to move back towards that vertical condition that we had at the start. But look at where the club head is relative to where it was in the backswing. It's gone much higher, the shoulder's much higher, and from here, I'm in a very, very strange position where I'm gonna be working the club across the golf ball. So notice how the golf club stays on this plane. And then as I start to use the shoulder, we are able to try and square the club face, but we're not really gonna get a very good result from there because whilst we have maybe changed with the club points, it's going to be working very much across the ball and it really affects our body shape. So it's when we get from the top and we're very, very keen to use this shoulder to start to square the club face, so common. And you may well, you know, have experienced that on the golf course, you may well feel that from the top, you're kind of lunging at the golf ball or you're throwing your shoulders over and you really feel like it's rushed from the top. What I would love you to do is, from setup, notice how my elbows are fairly level with each other. What I'd love you to do is make some little back swings from here, where we rotate, 
And as we move around to this position, notice how my trail elbow is much lower. What I would now love you to do is try and rotate that club back to where it was at the start. Squaring the club face. So you'll notice that our leading edge is now pretty much vertical, but I'm trying to keep my trail elbow lower than my lead elbow. If I keep my trail elbow lower than my lead elbow, that pretty much means my shoulder has been controlled. And I've rotated the club face with my forearms and my wrists, which is exactly what I want to do. We are really trying to avoid the temptation to get the club face in the right position through this shoulder here, which is, as I say, one of the most common faults that we see from the golfers who struggle with delivery and consistency and, and strike and all of those things that may well sound familiar to you. So initially, you can notice that I'm doing this quite slowly. I'm just rotating back and I'm trying to keep this elbow lower as I rotate the golf club back. And notice how, if anything, my trail shoulder is slightly lower than my lead shoulder. So that's a great little drill that you can do. It can really help you understand how to square the club face without using the shoulder by using a little bit more of the forearms. Now, once we have the release kind of a little bit better and we have a little bit of a better understanding about how we do that, doesn't necessarily mean we can hit the ball straight, unfortunately. If I held this golf ball in my trail hand, because the golf club rotates around our body and it opens, as we said, and it closes, we can't really get away with that. It should work very much in sync with the body. Now notice where the palm of my hand faces, it faces down at that flag. As I rotate my body, my palm will suddenly face somewhere different. It faces now out to the right. And as I rotate through, it faces out to the left. So I can have this pretty almost perfect pivot and pivot rotation. But what about if I release this golf ball at various points? Well, it's gonna go in different places. If I release this golf ball far too late, it's going to go to the left. So was that the wrong movement? Well, not really, it was the right movement, but I released the golf club at the wrong point. The golf ball, I should say, I released the golf ball at the wrong point. So once we have understood this movement, keeping the trail elbow lower and square in the face, that's the movement that we want. We still have to work on the timing. We still have to get the timing of the release correct. And what I'd really love you to do in practice is actually try and release the golf club correctly, as we've described, but actually just work on how would I make the ball go left? When would I have to release it to go left? And then you might hit a shot when you release it a little bit later and the ball goes to the right. This is where you almost need to create some awareness, create some skill and, and find out what the right timing is for you because it's very difficult to coach someone into what the right timing is. We need to just create an environment where they can experiment and they can learn and they can sort of grow and they can understand what they're trying to do. So if we had the target out there, which is the flag, and I could actually just go ahead and make some swings where I'm working on the correct release, but I might try and have that happen a little bit too early. And that ball has curved well left of target. So was my release poor? You could say it was, but I would say the release was actually good. It was just a little bit too early. I might then put another ball down and then try and do the same thing, but release it a little later. What we're trying to do in this video is understand and work on the correct release, but then develop, as I said a moment ago, an environment where we can practice the timing because the two things have to go hand in hand. You could have a perfect release and still at the ball right to target, still at the ball left to target and struggle to hit greens and struggle to shoot the scores that you want to but you put it on camera and the release looks really good. So don't always think when you're working on your golf swing that it needs to be technical changes. Sometimes it can just be working on the timing of what you do and that's really, really important. So I'm gonna hit one more shot here. And this time I'm gonna time this a little differently. And this ball's gonna go out to the right. So that the ball's finishing way over by those trees on the right-hand side. So I've just created two different releases, sorry, two different timed releases to make the ball go left and the ball go right. I should therefore be able to create the one which makes the ball go straight. I just need to focus in on that and work on that during practice. So understanding how we actually square the club face from the top of the back, seeing not with the shoulder, but with the arms and the wrists, and then work on timing. It's a really good way to start to improve your iron play, start to improve your consistency on the course, start to ultimately control where the ball goes and have control over where the ball goes. And that's really what we're trying to get you to do in this video. 
Thanks for watching. Usual stuff down below, comments box. Love to hear your thoughts on this video. There's a like button, and that over there is the button that you need to press to be a subscriber of the channel. It is absolutely free. It just means you'll be notified each time I upload a video just like this one to help you play some better.